Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be using a 3D printer to build this small scene of a German soldier. So as I mentioned I was recently lucky enough to get a 3D printer and the two pieces that I've printed in this video were some of the first that I produced. So hopefully that means that the quality of my printing will improve once uh, my skill set improves and once I better understand the printer itself. For the 3D model of the soldier and the wall I headed over to CG Trader now at the time I downloaded it, there must have been some kind of sale on because I did download this for free, uh, legitimately. But I can see now as I recorded this video that it's uh, the figure in the wall of $4.90. But as we look through the preview here, you can see it's a very detailed model. Really quite impressive. This is the name of the artist who created the models. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. And he produces a large number of World War II figures. So here you can see the uh, previews in green are American soldiers, those in brown are Soviet soldiers, and those in the blue-grey colour are German soldiers. You can see there's a large range here of uh, different unusual poses, uh, well worth exploring. And although this video isn't sponsored uh, by this artist, um, I was very, very happy with the figure. Um, I know I got it for free, but uh, I'm definitely looking into buying some more of these figures in the future too. So once I downloaded the figure, I loaded it into my slicing software ready for 3D printing. I wasn't quite clear what scale the figure was in, so um, I did a bit of a hack in order to get to the right scale. Basically, I uh, knelt down in a similar kind of pose and measured the distance from the top of my head to the ground. That came out as about 1300 millimeters. So I divided that 1300 by 35 because using 135th scale here. And then I scaled the model down until the z-axis, in this case the blue axis, was approximately the right height. You can see once I put that in that the, the figure has been scaled down to 77% of the size it was. So it was slightly over uh, 135th scale before. That 77% is really important because we'll need to apply it also to the wall as well later on. A big part of 3D printing is getting the supports correct getting them in the right place and getting enough of them to obviously support the model, but not so many that they become difficult to remove or damage the model. As I say, this was one of my first prints, so I really was experimenting here. Um, so don't take this as a tutorial on how to do your 3D printing at all. I used the automated functions in the software to put the supports on and uh, it, it worked well enough for me. Then I loaded in the wall model and of course applied that same 77% scaling to keep it in scale with the figure. Apparently printing shapes like the wall often works better at an angle. Um, I did read an article that explained why, but anyway I printed that at an angle there with some supports. Once they came out of the 3D printer, which took about uh, less than three hours actually, you can see our figure here, looking very nice. The supports are very clear, nice and thin with some quite small connection points. A few of them are slightly awkward, like the brim of the helmet, or the fingers. You can see there has been a small issue there with the arm. Um, that's almost certainly because it wasn't properly supported, and you can see it's, um, the layers have started to split there in the arm. I push that together later on with a bit of super glue. The wall itself also looks pretty good. And you can see that wall printed with very few supports on that nice smooth face there. The white parts on the wall there, I believe, are because I didn't fully dry the isopropyl alcohol off the wall before I put it into the wash and cure machine. I think that's why they're there. Um, as I say, I'm still learning this process, but I believe that's the problem there. It's not a big issue and it will paint over. It just looks a bit strange at the moment. Here's our figure once he's been cleaned of supports. I did slightly damage the rifle strap when removing the support, so you can see it's just come off the end there. but. In the hole, it's, uh, it's intact. So to build a scene, I built a square of XPS foam, dividing the frame roughly diagonally. Small pieces of balsa wood were used to border this and then pinned into place while the PVA glue dried. Then I use my favourite dry ground texture from AK. It's a lovely acrylic texture. I slopped that all over the place. I 
This paste forms a really good bond, so I was able to put the wall directly into the paste with no other adhesive, and I would know that it would stick it. As it dried, I tidied the paste up a bit, getting rid of any obvious marks. Then I added a variety of stones, starting with the larger ones. Moving down to the medium ones. Just scattering them all over the terrain. We've got a mix of media here with um, acrylic paste and stone and resin. So to me a primer was used to give a nice consistent surface for painting. Everything was given a coat of black XF1 to me acrylics. Then the ground was given a coat of flat earth XF52. The details of the bricks and the stones on the ground were painted by hand. For this I used Vallejo model colour, thinned with a tiny amount of water. You can see there I've airbrushed an initial coat of white onto the wall as well. Picking out the stones I'm just mixing various greys and tan colours. Try to make sure they're not all in the same uniform colour. Once that was done it was time for some PVA diluted with water and this would form the base of my static grass. I used 4mm light green from Woodland Scenics and then later I would use some 7mm medium green as well. I've never quite got the results I wanted for my static grass applicator and particularly here in the image it looks like all the pieces are just falling flat. However, if you take it and shake off the excess There are at least some pieces there which have fallen uh, vertically and stuck vertically. For the longer grass I applied some more glue. But instead of using the static grass applicator I simply took some bunches of grass between the fingers and stuck them in place. Again, shaking off the excess. A few leaves were attached to the scene using PVA glue. I can't remember the brand of these leaves, I just had them in my uh, scenery box. The next step was to do some weathering on the wall. For this I used some Abteilung 502 oil paints. Placing some dots of various earth and dark brown colours onto the wall. Then using some white spirit and a clean brush to blend them into streaking patterns. Oils of course are easily removed so you don't need to worry too much about making a mess of your model. And the key is just to keep blending and blending until you're happy with the result. I probably should have done this before the streaks but I took some thinned uh, dark brown oil paint and put it into the recesses on the wall. Basically a pin wash for the wall. You can see here how it flows into the cracks and the crevices. For any excess you can clean it up with white spirit or you can do what I'm doing here which is simply blend it in. Adding some more streaks. Of 
course I did the same thing on the other side of the wall and on the end to try to give some depth to those bricks. AK wet ground was used on the ground, funnily enough, to try to break up the colour of the flat earth. I didn't cover the entire ground, but put patches around some of the stones and some patches just in the middle of the grass. I've had this uh, Kato long grass lying around for a while. Um, I must have bought it a couple of years ago now and I've never really used it, but I'm trying to get through some of these excess supplies that I have and actually put them to use. I've got this green colour and the light colour. I took a few of the pieces into a bunch, attached them onto the model using PVA glue. Of course a better way to do this would have been to put the glue onto the bunch of grass rather than directly onto the scenery, but hey. For the figure, I tried to do some pre-shading by painting the figure black from below to act as the shadows and white from above to act as the highlights. This was applied with an airbrush. I then airbrushed on a thin layer of Tamiya XF65, which is field green, trying to preserve those highlights. At this stage you can see a couple of the layer marks on the figure from the 3D printing and uh, I think with experience or with hindsight it would have been better to do a bit more sanding on that figure first. Of course with sanding and resin you have to be very careful but I think that could have improved the, uh, the result there. The various accessories were painted using a brush using Vallejo model colours. For any highlights I mixed in a small amount of dark sand in order to lighten that base colour. For the uniform highlights and shadows I took this yellow olive as a base colour. I mixed in some dark sand for the highlights and a tiny amount of black for the shadows. And all of those colours were thinned with water. When painting the shadows I tried to use the previous black and white layer that I painted as a guide. It was sort of visible through the base coat. I went for only the darkest areas here, so under the arms, in the folds on the legs. And I think that adds quite a nice uh, fake shadow effect. The process of painting highlights is of course very similar, except the paint is lighter with a dark yellow and it's painted on the raised areas. This looks quite prominent right now, but it does blend into the base colour once it's dried. If it's much darker than this, then it doesn't really look like highlights at all by the time it's dried. I tried to improve the face by blending in some highlight flesh from AK, but as you can see here, it ended up just making a bit of a mess. I did get there in the end with something that I think is passable, but I haven't shown it here simply because what I did wouldn't really count as a technique, it was really quite hit and miss, um, so I still need to keep practicing in that area. I did add a oil wash to a couple of areas to highlight the detail, such as on the edge of the bedroll here. 
and around the equipment such as the belt. Finally I wanted to blend the figure into the base so I took some European earth pigment, applied it and blended it into a few areas on the ground on the base. I found this provided a nice variation to the colours that were already there. And finally I added the same pigment to the boots and the lower legs of the soldier. And with that done the figure and the base were complete, so let's take a look at the final result. Okay guys, there we go. That was a small display base, scene, whatever you'd like to call it, of one of my first 3D printed projects. This was great fun, I really enjoyed making this. Um, I don't know if it's because it was uh, so small and so it let me sort of focus on the details a bit more, but I had great fun doing this. It's really enjoyable. I'm definitely going to go back to that same website, that same author, and look for some more 3D models from him. One thing I will say is that you can see very clearly in photos like this one here, the layer lines from the 3D printer. You can't actually see those in real life. I'm very lucky in that I have a very nice uh, prime macro lens. It brings out all the detail, but in this case it's brought out those layer line details as well. Uh, details which just honestly aren't visible with the human eye. That said, it wouldn't hurt in the future for me to give a bit more of a sanding to these uh, 3D prints so they look a bit better in photos. Since I printed this model in probably um, late November, early December time, I feel like I've learned a bit more about 3D printing. Um, I've printed a few more items. They haven't really uh, come through yet into my YouTube videos because I normally work quite a few months ahead, but you will be seeing some more 3D printing in my upcoming builds. And certainly one of the things I want to use the 3D printer for, at least initially, is building things like accessories and so on. Uh, partly because they're easier to, um, to find models of. Um, I can also have an attempt at building uh, a model myself. You know, I, I can build a box quite easily in 3D software. It's a little bit harder to build a person. Um, and also just because it, that helps to sort of break things up and, and make your, hopefully make your models stand out a little bit more compared to, uh, to uh, the kits that you get in the shops. So I'll be having a lot of fun hopefully trying that in the future. And in the meantime, thank you everyone for watching. Your support's massively appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would like to say a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, whose support is hugely, hugely appreciated. Um, I'm really enjoying the, uh, the small community which is uh, building on my Patreon page. It's really nice to engage with you guys, whether it's on the comments on the YouTube channel, on the community page on YouTube, or on the Patreon page itself. So if you want to find out more about Patreon, there is a link in the description below. My next video is going to be another one on the Dora. It's going to be part two of the build of that. So guys, until next time, have fun modeling. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon in the next video.